Yo, what's up guys? Maddie here from DCL Blogger. Holy shit, it has been a while since I've made a video. Um, where have I been? Well, I've been in Ireland, believe it or not. Be believe it or not. Uh, I've been in Ireland, kind of visiting my sis. I've been there for a couple of years, so I just go visit her before I get busy with just me being Maddie and doing a shit ton of work and being a workaholic. So earlier this year, we flew over there and... Um, Kind of got stuck for a bit. We were originally planning on being there for three weeks, but uh, ended up being six to seven weeks because it was hard to find a flight back. And anyway, it was such a mess. And by the end of it, I really just wanted to come back to work, uh, come back home to Melbourne. So here I am now and uh, took a week off, took uh, much of last week off to cool down. I think I arrived on the Tuesday. Uh, it is a Wednesday now in Melbourne, or maybe it's a Thursday. I'm not too sure. Um, but slowly getting back in the groove of things. So here's a YouTube video, gonna do a Twitter thread, got a shit ton of stuff to do for Medici, um, but really gonna start pumping the um, pedal when it comes to content creating and just making videos, because I've just missed them so much. But in this one, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about numbers. So when looking at NFT projects, there's a few different numerical uh, number-based metrics that I look at before investing. And these are just indicators that give you an idea and more information before you make that investment decision, which has served me really well. I mean, I've been doing this for the last three to four years and investing in the NFT space. Um, and so I thought I'd just share what I know, you know, um, and here's a 10 piece thread. I thought I'd make a video about it. So holders, uh, we've opened up Board Ape, Yacht, Board Ape Yacht Club. If you don't know who these guys are, I don't know what to say. But a real, one of the first things I look at, as soon as I find a project, straight away, I'm like, all right, well, who are the holders and how much do they hold? So I'll click on any of the NFTs and I'll go to details and I'll click on contract address. Then I'll click on the token tracker. Then I'll click on holders um, and bam, it'll tell me who sort of like the top holders are. So you can see Dingaling owns 108, JRNY Club owns 107. Um, you've got these random addresses. We can click in there and figure out who they are. Jimmy, uh, Volta Jimmy owns 60. Um, and you can kind of get a grasp of what type of collectors are the whales and how much, um, how much top holders there are. For example, right? For example, if the founding team owns like 3,000 of them, or there's a very well known flipper that owns like 3,000 or 2,000 of them, then you can probably expect a lot of downward pressure. You can expect a lot of, like, if they decide to sell at some point, well, that's a lot of supply to hit the market. And usually that means there's a, it's a price cap until that person sells off a lot of their um, quantity. So, you know, this gives us a lot of information based on what trajectory the project might take, based on what, what phase it's at. So, yeah, uh, as soon as the project is launched, I take a look at this. Even like six months down the line or a year down the line, I'll take a look at this just to see, okay, well, maybe JRNY Club crypto in the last three months he's offloaded 30 to 40 of them well that's less of a risk than him having the whole 107 right um i don't know his style it seems like it's hold and just keep because he's got a youtube channel and it seems like he's he likes to have the status of owning this many so um you know that gives you an idea of him i know jimmy's a collector he's been collecting art for like three to four years very very early earlier than me like even with crypto kitties and he's been i'm pretty sure he's a holder like i can't remember him selling a single thing so Unless it was Sotheby's, I think he sold a gold ape on Sotheby's. But uh, it gives you an idea that, okay, he's owned 60, so he's a collector. So it gives us an idea as how many people own a lot and who those people are and what the trajectory might take down the line, right? Uh, what else? Uh, we have here doo -doo -doo -doo, distribution. So distribution is one of my favorite metrics. Um, it's how many people own one or more. Right, so Board Ape Yacht Club, there's 10,000 items, 6,300 owners, which means it's 63% distributed. Um, which means that there are 63,000 people that own at least one, right? Um, and there's 3,700 people that own one or more, right? And generally speaking, like if you think about human nature and how it sort of works, when you have doubles of something, you're it's easier for you to let go of one of the doubles, right? Um, so if I have, if there's like people that have hundreds and hundreds of these, and there's a lot of those people, then it's easier for them to make the decision to sell when the time comes to sell. The collector class really happens when like, ideally, like in a perfect world, imagine if like there's 10,000 items and there's 9,500 owners, 
Um, and each one of those owners, so there's only 500 people with the doubles, which means that there's very little people that will probably be selling, which means that if anyone wants to buy these, then you'll have to buy it from someone that really doesn't want to sell. Um, and that's how prices get really, really big because either you have to knock on their door and give them a really big, um, juicy uh, price offer or, or something like that. Or, you know, you've listed it quite expensive and someone will buy it because that's the only way to get it. So distribution makes... Is one of the biggest things. I think, uh, what was it called? I think, is it Rarity Sniper? No, Rarity Tools has a really cool percentage for distribution. So if you go to Rarity Tools and you go all the way down here, I think there is, here, here we go. Here's the metric over here. So sales, total supply, owners, owner percentage. This is what I'm talking about, right? Owner percentage, crypto, punks. Uh, this is a bit incorrect because there's like a mix. I think there's like the mix of the wrapped contract and the non-wrapped contract. So I don't think... This is accurate, but you can see here, Board Ape Yacht Club, um, 63%, Mutant Ape Yacht Club, 65%, you got Clone Exit, 43%. If you kind of, maybe, maybe we'll uh, do this right by the ordering. Usually you find the more the supply, the less the percentage, like it's easier when there's little supply to have a very large percent. That's just how it works. So you'll notice a lot of these probably have, um, Crypto Mums has 77%, average price at 0 0.09 ETH. Um, what do we have here? Actually, maybe it's better to just go with the volume seven days like we were last time. Okay, uh, sixty-three percent. You got forty-three percent over here with Clonex. So although Clonex is a really cool project, there's a lot of whales still there, and it's only forty-three percent distributed. Sixty-five percent. You can see sort of when it gets to about fifty to sixty percent plus. It starts to hit that fifty percent plus. That's when you start to hit hit some really big numbers, right? They're not always correlated, but they matter. So, yeah definitely something to keep an eye on um what else do we have then we have listed items all right so again we go to board app yacht club and what you normally find is if you click on buy now you'll, you'll open c will give you this number 1359 items which means that there's 1000 out of the 10,000 um 13 of people have listed this for sale and then if you go to activity and you're kind of seeing well it looks like you know 10, 5 or 10, maybe 5 to 20 are being bought a day, maybe averaged out to 10. So you can say, well, in 30 days, um, you know, 300 will be sold, which means that will go down to maybe 1100 if people decide not to sell. Um, and uh, it'll get, the price will increase easier because there's less sellers, right? Hope that sort of makes sense. So I definitely look at the number of items listed for sale. If you go here and there's suddenly like, you know, 4,000 items for sale, that means there's a lot of sellers that buyers have to chew through for the price to increase. Alrighty, let's see, uh, price graphs. Okay, so price graphs are incre uh, interesting. Uh, this one is from Treeverse. Let's just quickly open up Treeverse. I think my battery is low, hopefully it doesn't kind of crash on me. Treeverse plots, um, great project done by Loopify. I have a pretty big position with Treeverse, but you can kind of see here, if you open it up to all time, just giving some some information like how this sort of works. And I've always seen this case, right? There's always like this big, big, big spike exponential curve and there's a lot of interest. And then there's like days and days of it cooling off. And then there's this like cool off period. And there's another big spike, another cool off period. And the higher the price goes, the longer the cool off period. The price is now 1.5 ETH. And uh, there's like a cool off period. So, you know, the graph that I've got here on my Twitter, you can see here, there's the red zone is where I personally don't buy. Um, and I kind of just watch just to see how high it goes. The green zone is where I buy. I, I buy when it kind of dips a lot and it's kind of proving that people are continually, continuously buying. So I like to see sales happening. 11, 25, 20, uh, 5, 8, 15, 45. So every now and then there's interest, there's interest. So that means a project has the ability to bring in new eyeballs and new users and new interest, even though it's quiet sometimes, right? Depending on... Sometimes crypto is going crazy. Sometimes crypto is not going crazy, but the project has the ability to continuously bring new buyers, which means that in the long, 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 long term, the price should go up. All right. What else do we have? We go back here. Um, went through price graphs, price walls. All right. Clonex. Um, I think each one of these has an eight, 18 ETH uh, price on it. So sometimes you'll notice, like if you look at Clonex right now, it's like 14 ETH. 14.2, 14.5, 15, there's about six to seven that stand between the 14 and the 15 ETH price. It's pretty easy to go to 15 ETH. Once it hits 18 ETH, there's like 20 to 25 that are at 18 ETH, which means that um, there's a lot to chew through 
um, if it's kind of like a wall, right? In the crypto industry and in the cryptographs and stuff like that, they're sort of like sell walls. There's a lot of selling at that specific price point. You know, mentally people, it seems like they like to sell um, at certain price points, like 10 ETH, 20 ETH. A lot of board Ape Yacht Club people are probably selling at 100 ETH. These are like mental sort of sell points. So this, those sort of things kind of let us know where if the price increases and the rate of it increasing, there's some information as to what those price points that might kind of hinder that that ease of increasing might might be the top for that cycle right it's not always the case um and every project has these um not many sellers thin order books so if you go to certain projects um i mean this was from curio cards you notice that one of the listings was from 1.28 to 2.1 point point one only four sales in between to reach that price so if there's any volume that comes in and suddenly there's a big interest in curio cards it'll increase quite easily because the 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 wall is quite thin, right? The cell wall is quite thin. I'm trying to rush through this a little bit because I've got like eight minutes and my battery dies. Six minutes and my battery dies. Types of sales, okay? So sometimes you'll go and check out um a project and the types of sales that are occurring sometimes are actually bid accepts. So when there's a lot of sales happening and there are bid accepts and not actual people from buying, that means that that sellers are accepting their offers, right? And too many people do that then suddenly the price drops quite dramatically. It also shows you how many people at that specific time are looking at that project and actually buying, let alone sellers that are just accepting offers. So that's another thing I look at. Max supply, obviously the less the supply, the, the easier the price goes higher. It's just supply and demand works like that, right? Um, and a few others. So I hope that helps a little bit. There's a few indicators that, that I look at, some numbers, some data. I mean, yes, the foundations must be important, the founders. Um, everything needs to check out, but numbers at the time of investing, it tells me the timing. A project could be great, but your timing could be bad. You could be invest investing at like a really big peak, right? <clears throat> As opposed to investing in the right project at the right time. Timing is, is what matters, to be honest, in, in, in with investing. If you're, again, with mana token, you're investing at $3.30, or are you investing at $0.03 cents where you have 100x to so have it at $3.30? So um, timing is what's the difference between 100x and a 2x or a 5x or even negative momentum. Anyway, hope you learned something and I'll see you guys in another video.